My name's Susan Conroy and I'm the Executive Director for Southern Tablelands Arts. And this morning I thought I'd talk about our Habitat Corridors project, um, which has just run over the last month. It's a fantastic program, I think, that was funded through Inspiring Australia with an Australian National Science uh, Week grant. So we conceived this project working with groups like uh, Landcare, Lock Landcare, um, over a year ago and started seeking funding to make the project happen. And because we're an arts organisation, as a science hub, we deliberately try and bring together both the science and the creative process. And I think that there are some really beautiful things that have come out of the project. We've continued to strengthen our core relationships with uh, organisations like the Landcare Groups, with the Office of Environment and Heritage, with some of the councils that we work with um, from time to time, so in this instance it was the Cops, but equally the relationships we form with people in communities. So we've got creatives, we've got people who are passionate about the environment, have all come together over a three week period, and then there are other people that got introduced to what we've all been doing um, at the forum that was held in Harbin. And the level of energy and joy and pleasure that was evident um, as people were in the making process, the passionate attention that they paid to uh, Dr Damon Oliver talking uh, about his passion to do with um, habitat and habitat corridors and stepping stones. It was just a fantastic thing to be part of and to see. So, welcome to the project. I probably had a pretty good awareness of some of those features, but but not how, not really quite how relevant they were, and how um, how limited some animals are and birds are in in their range, and why they need things like stepping stones and and corridors. I enrolled in this workshop because the the art aspect of it interested me but I am also very interested in animals and birds and the thought of doing some artwork and raising awareness of um, endangered species and how to protect them really did appeal to me. I've just moved into a property that backs onto a wetland and I've been watching the native wildlife and watching the regeneration that's been happening in that area so it's been making me think about corridors and um, spaces in the changing landscape that I've just like moved from rural Greywood into suburbia. I'm a great artist but I very much I'd probably say environmentalist and I quite like um, the opportunity to bring art and people who are interested in the environment together and then with the forum to possibly um, introduce art and environmental issues to a wider group of people than might traditionally attend like an, a land care event. The first activity we've done is paper dyeing and I've been really impressed with the complexity of shapes that come out just through the placement of leaves um, and through the actual paper dyeing process and the colours that come out. I love the um, dyeing the paper and I thought the idea of using, using the plant material to actually change the colour of the paper, but also to enhance, the, you know, to capture the the elements of the of the leaves and things was was wonderful. And using that that um, dyed paper then to make feathers, I thought was a a great way of doing a, a group work. It's been interesting doing uh, what was done today with the paper dyeing and that sort of thing and learning about these different endangered species in the habitat corridors. Um, for me, I'm also a photographer as well, so I guess it's uh, maybe spurred a bit of an interest to uh, go out and try to uh, photograph some of these animals in uh, and, and some, some of the habitats. I do a bit of uh, drone photography as well, so um, you get a different perspective from the air, so I guess I'll be looking more at the landscape in a different way. One of the aspects of our art is going to be used like a wave of feathers and I think that is a great 
um, visual prompt for the corridors that happen in the landscape, that the, our airways in the landscape for the birds. And then we've also, I expect to actually be doing some artwork on um, animal footprints and things like that. And that I could see being a great, being used as a great visual representation of movement of land-based animals through the landscape. I just think it's really nice the projects like this exist in the community that are accessible and free. Uh, it just encourages people from cross cultures and different areas to come together and we can all learn from each other. I'd love to see stuff like this also being implemented with young people. I think it's the combination of art and science can really help young people understand what's happening in their local environment. I've already thought that this sort of workshop might be something we can do in our Borua, Yass, Gunning, Upper Lachlan sort of area because a number of our land care groups actually have recently won grants to protect the habitat of threatened species. And as I've said before, this um, way of bringing artists and environmentalists and just people who are interested in looking after our landscape together is a great opportunity and it's an, a different way of doing it than our traditional tree planting activities and things like that. Having a forum at the end of a, a couple of workshops like this is a very good way of raising community awareness. So the fact that there is to be a small exhibition and a forum involved at the end, that's a great way to finish off a project.